John Kelly continues to find new depths of disgrace in his role as White House Chief of Staff. His vicious comments last week about immigrant families being ripped apart by the Trump government with children thrown into, quote, foster care or whatever, actually reflect John Kelly's own thinking. That is something Kelly would happily opine about at any bar in the Boston neighborhood where he grew up. That cruelty comes straight from John Kelly's own heart. That cruelty is not something that he learned in the Trump White House. The immigrants in John Kelly's own ancestry who came to this country not speaking English and never learning to speak English fit perfectly John Kelly's description last week of people who should not be allowed into this country. So John Kelly managed to disgrace his own ancestors with those comments, but he sure sounds like he means it when he says it. At the same time, it is still impossible, just impossible to imagine that John Kelly shares White House staffer Kelly Sadler's disdain for Senator John McCain when she said this last week in a White House staff meeting in reaction to Senator McCain's opposition to the president's nominee to be the director of the CIA, quote, it doesn't matter, he's dying anyway. It is impossible to believe that John Kelly does not respect John McCain, the decorated former prisoner of war in Vietnam, who comes from a family richer in military tradition than John Kelly's own family. And so John Kelly's silence about Kelly Sadler's McCain comment has to be the product of John Kelly's own cowardly fear of the wrath of Donald Trump. Any other White House chief of staff would have fired Kelly Sadler immediately upon learning of her comment. Any White House staffer with the slightest sense of decency and duty to the White House would have immediately quit when her comment became public so as to relieve the White House of that terrible controversy. But not Kelly Sadler. She doesn't have that kind of decency. She promised Senator McCain's daughter, Meghan McCain, last week in a telephone apology to Meghan McCain that she would apologize publicly, and she has not done it. And so it is now very clear who is managing the White House response to the Kelly Sadler comments about John McCain. Here's the White House press briefing today. Why not just apologize so America doesn't think that that is an acceptable way of speaking inside this White House? Well, I understand the focus on this issue, but it's going to be dealt with uh, and has been dealt with internally. Can you explain how it's being addressed internally? Obviously, if I uh, explain all that, then it won't remain internal. I can explain it. You can explain it. Anyone who has been watching Donald Trump can explain it. Donald Trump is obviously personally managing this controversy in the White House, and he is forbidding Kelly Sadler from publicly apologizing to John McCain, and he is forbidding John Kelly from firing Kelly Sadler, and he is forbidding former General John Kelly from standing with the American military hero John McCain and at least publicly condemning Kelly Sadler's comment even if he is not allowed to fire her. There will be leaks. We might have to wait for another Michael Wolff book, but there will be leaks about how John Kelly handled himself inside the Trump White House when the day came to stand silently with Kelly Sadler or stand honorably with John McCain. The White House press secretary conducted a meeting about the leak of what Kelly Sadler had to say about John McCain, and Axios reports a visibly upset and furious press secretary Sarah Sanders told the group, quote, I am sure this conversation is going to leak too, and that's just disgust disgusting. And of course, I can read you that quote of what the White House press secretary said in that meeting because it was leaked by one or more of those people who Donald Trump calls traitors and cowards. Joining our discussion now, Ron Klain, the former chief of staff to Vice Presidents Joe Biden and Al Gore, and a former senior aide to President Obama. And back with us is John Hallman. And Ron Klain, you have lived and worked in a White House, and all White Houses are concerned about leaks, but we've never seen anything quite like this. 
No, look, leaks are part of Washington, and they happen in all administrations. But this one seems to be worse by a factor of many than anything we've seen. But the fundamental problem is this. If the president wants to stop leaks of horrible, embarrassing information about his administration, he ought to stop doing horrible and embarrassing things. I mean, the, the fundamental problem really isn't that this stuff is leaking out. The fundamental problem is that this stuff is happening. And then a member of the president's staff would say what Kelly Sadler said about John McCain. Again, the issue isn't that it's leaked, it's that she said it and nothing has been done about it. And by now, John Heilman, uh, we it's, it's fair to infer that President Trump thinks about John McCain exactly the way Kelly Sadler does. Well, I think we could have inferred that um, sometime before, given the history with him and John McCain. I, I really think that I, I don't want to cut. She said a horrible thing. Everybody we know has said something snotty or something uh, disrespectful or something nasty about someone at some point and regretted it. And it's the easiest thing in the world. It's hard. Not, mm -hmm. not, it's not without. It's not completely easy. But really, if you just come out and apologize and say, you know, everyone will understand that you could have said something obnoxious. She apparently apologized privately to the McCain family. Having apologized privately, what is the reason why they will not apologize publicly? And it has something to do with Donald Trump's attitude, which is never apologize for anything ever. And I think they just, this is the most insane prolonging of a ridiculous, of a story that's doing nothing but bad for them, when all it would have taken was 30 seconds for the woman to just come out publicly and say, and the White House to stand by her and say, yep, I, I, I said something terrible. Terrible. Genuinely terrible. I'm really sorry for that. Uh, and it would all be over. But of course, that then would raise the question. Um, well, wait, your boss said that he started trashing John McCain back when he first got into this race and isn't what you were saying just basically consistent, a worse version, but a consistent version of what President Trump thinks about John McCain. And then you'd have a whole other set of issues and troubles. Ron Clayton, uh, different jobs have different standards of, of public conduct and different reactions to when private conduct becomes public. Uh, there's no stricter standard that I'm aware of than the White House itself. Uh, can you imagine something like this, even if it was said a, her defense is it was a joke? That's her defense. Uh, uh, that can work as a defense in comedy writing rooms uh, in, in Hollywood. It can work in many settings. It can work in many uh, uh, workplaces. Uh, but uh, what, what do you think any other White House, uh, their reaction would be uh, to a comment like this being made public? Well, look, I agree with John Hoffman. Everyone says things they regret in politics and in public life. The key thing is to own up to them and to apologize both privately and publicly. That wasn't done here. I have doubts that this was a joke, though. And I mean, you, as, as John mentioned, uh, Donald Trump has said the most horrible things about John McCain. And by the way, not just in this campaign, but all the way back to 2000, when jo uh, Donald Trump started on this trope that John McCain wasn't a hero because he was captured during the Vietnam War, this man who avoided service to his country uh, during that war. So I, I think that the, the fundamental problem here is a lack of respect for Senator McCain. Uh, look, I disagree with John McCain on a lot of issues. I worked hard on a campaign to beat him for the presidency. But I don't so how, see how anyone cannot respect the man, the hero that he is, his service to our country. And that lack of respect is just evident in the Trump White House. The last thing I'll say is, you know, John McCain also has a lot of friends on Capitol Hill and a lot of friends in the U.S. Senate in particular. And this attitude from the Trump White House is going to cost them up there on Capitol Hill if they want to try to get anything else done up there in the foreseeable future. John Kelly famously said, I remember when women were sacred, were held sacred. Apparently, he does not remember when prisoners of war were sacred. You, you would have thought that if John Kelly uh, had control over this White House and had, uh, again, a, he's a military man, you know, he's got, he must, in some, on some level, he, he must respect John McCain's mm -hmm. sacrifice. He must respect John McCain. And so he must either feel as though he's given up on trying to uh, contain some of the excesses in this White House, or he feels cowed by President Trump, who he's afraid that if he were to order uh, the, 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 the person who committed this, this, this venal sin uh, to atone, that somehow he would, be, he would face the wrath of the president for allowing anybody in the White House to apologize for anything. And so either one, either he's just given up or he's afraid of Donald Trump, neither one looks is a very good look from, uh, for John Kelly. Ron Clay, your reaction to the former Marine general working in the White House being absolutely silent on this comment about John McCain? 
it's it's just sad, Lawrence. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. I mean, John Kelly he obviously had great service to our country. He paid the ultimate sacrifice in the loss of a son serving our country, and and is a dedicated, loyal military man. And for someone with that kind of record to not be able, not to have the authority or the will or whatever he's been deprived to uh, say to Kelly Sadler, you march out there publicly and you apologize to Senator McCain and his family in public, uh, is a horrible unwinding of his authority, of his moral authority, of the kind of authority he should have as White House chief of staff. And that Donald Trump has done that to him is a horrible thing. And that John Kelly has accepted it is an equally horrible thing. And, and it's, just, it's just a disgrace to see. And John Kelly will continue to go to work tomorrow and work side by side with Kelly Sadler. Ron Klain, thank you for joining our discussion tonight. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.